Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome back to Marginal Gains. Now today's video is the Puntastic Water Surprise. Yeah, that's what a surprise. So anyway, if you've only really played mainland and you're suddenly confronted with an ocean, a lake or a river, then knowing a little bit about some civilization's special naval units would be quite fun, wouldn't it? So let's have a look. So, when you think of navy, I'm assuming you think of ships. And if you don't think ships, then you're probably not aware of what a navy is. So let me enlighten you. It's mostly ships. And sailors. So as with all structures in Zero AD, the ships aren't all equal though. So all factions will either have access to the medium warship or the trireme, but none have access to both. So let's see the difference between them. The medium warships available for the Britons, Gauls and Iberians. As you can see on screen, it has slightly more health, 1600 as opposed to 1400. It can garrison 10 more soldiers on board, but as a result of this it's slightly slower and it takes more than 60% longer to build. Everything else though is identical. However, there are three civilizations that have access to a far better ship, the heavy warship. And these are the Romans, the Seleucids and the Ptolemies. The heavy warship not only has 2,000 health and an increased garrison limit of 50 rather than 40 or 30, its biggest advantage is actually that it delivers crush damage, which is helpful for taking out towers and key buildings near the shoreline prior to landing your troops for a ground assault. You can also actually garrison additional catapults on boards, and you have to bear in mind that all the civilizations that have this ship also have access to catapults, and this increases the number of projectiles it fires. This makes a huge advantage over civilizations that don't have access to this ship. And if that wasn't enough, for fans of the Ptolemies, you've even got another advantage, the Ptolemy Juggernaut. This carries 100 people and it has 4,000 health, but otherwise it's much for muchness with the heavy warship. You also can only make one, and it counts as five to your population rather than three, but this seems a small trade-off for the heaviest ship in the game. And in case you were thinking, well, I'd better play as Ptolemies in any naval game, it actually gets better. They're the single best structure in the whole game, and that's the lighthouse. Now this gives a permanent line of sight of every single shoreline in the whole map. Now whether the lighthouse is on the same piece of water or not doesn't even matter. Now this kind of vision is an incredible bonus, and it for me makes them the best seafarers in the whole game. Now after hearing about the Ptolemies, most other factions' unique things are going to seem a bit of a, well, anti-climax. So let's just look at some anyway though. Now another interesting structure that is available is for the Britons, and that's the island settlement. Now it's essentially a civic centre, but you need to build it on the shoreline of some water. Now this means that it can be used like a dock in terms of delivering fish, and it can produce all the same units as a civic centre, as well as all the same units as a dock. That said, although it makes merchant ships, it can't actually be used as a market. Therefore you're still going to need two docks to trade between. Nonetheless, something to think about. Another nifty trick worth knowing about is training soldiers from a ship. This can be a useful way of producing troops outside of your territory, where they essentially work as a mobile seabound barracks. Now this is available to two factions, and those are the Athenians and the Persians. As you may expect, the Persians are going to produce cavalry, seeing as that's their specialty, so you're able to get a skirmisher and a swords cavalry. The Athenians, however, are going to produce Athenian marines, which are champion swordsmen, as well as Cretan archers. Now in the case of the Athenians, you don't only have the chance to produce them from the ship, you can also produce them from a dock as long as you've hit phase 3, and that gives you the opportunity to still build troops outside of your territory. And while we're chatting about the Athenians, it's probably worth mentioning Themistocles. Now he's a hero that reduces the cost and build time of ships, as well as making any ship on which he's garrisoned, train soldiers and move more quickly. Now that's something well worth knowing if you're playing a naval map. And you'll probably not be surprised to hear that he's not the only hero that's available with naval base bonuses. There are another couple worth mentioning, although to be fair their bonus is nowhere near as good as Themistocles's is. The first belongs to the Kushites. This is Nastassen, who gives a bonus attack to all troops and increases loot from enemy soldiers, and also reduces the cost of triremes by 25% on all resources. The second takes us back to the Seleucids, and their very own Antiochus the Righteous, he reduces enemy ships, as well as siege engines and buildings, health by 20%. Again, this is a useful, if not particularly spectacular, bonus. To make a quick detour back to buildings, we have one of the Carthaginians' unique structures, the naval shipyard. Now, like a dock, it can be built outside your territory, but unlike a dock, it actually gains territory in similar amounts to a civic centre. 
This makes it a great way of expanding and even capturing space on the opposite side of a river. Its main use though is actually as a place to repair ships and it does this at 10 hit points per second. It has a garrison limit of 5 and strangely that applies to both ships and people. So you can either fit 5 huge ships in there or 5 tiny people. It's best not to worry about how that works. It also gives the Carthaginians access to a heavier ship than from their dock, the Quinquireme, which has the same stats as a heavy warship but a far cooler name. And its final element is that it gives a unique upgrade called Exploration. This gives all ships and traders, including their land traders, an additional 25% vision range. So all in all, for me this one building is actually enough to turn the Carthaginians from one of the worst factions on land to one of the best at sea. And the final unique unit that we're going to look at has already been covered in the Iberian Factions Overview that I made not that long ago. But in case you didn't see it, and you really should have by now, it's the Iberian Fireship. Now this is literally a ship that's on fire. It can't be controlled particularly or built to use in future. It's simply constructed and then lasts a short while before burning itself out. And when it burns itself out, it takes out anything that it comes into contact with. It's a fun unit to play with, but it's more of a novelty and annoyance to your enemy than something that can be used as a piece of strategic genius. And that's that. That's a full list of all the weird and wonderful things that Zero AD factions have to offer when played in the water. So maybe you should play a few naval maps for a change. You know, to quote my friend Alan Partridge. What a way to have a good time. Cheers.